Oh man, here we go again. <laughs> What's going on YouTube? Chrono here and welcome back to the channel. Oh dude, some of the things I have read over the course of the past 24 hours have actually given me a headache to the point that I have logged out of what I was doing and I've got to make a video to talk about it. There's not going to be any fancy edits, any fancy cuts here. I'm just going to show you guys some stuff kind of old school like we did back in base PSO2 and talk with you about some of the things that I have seen people talk about and explain. I, uh, it, it, it pains me. We'll just, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So with the release of the most recent patch this week, we got some pretty interesting changes that actually kind of favor the player pretty highly that players have been complaining about. And I don't understand why. And I have to assume it comes from a place of ignorance, not from an actual place of proper feedback. Because if we understood how these worked, people would not be complaining about them. So what are we talking about? Let's first talk about the upgrades. So for those of you guys who didn't know, if you pop over here to other enhanced materials, we have gold prim sword two and silver or gold prim armor twos. Now I'm going to go ahead and say I'm all for dunking on Sega when there's something to dunk on them about. And this is probably something that I would dunk on them about, but I'm also going to dunk on the community when they spread some of the dumbest things I've ever seen. So everyone is equally can get dunked on, including myself. I have been dunked on by my friends as well as my mods in my community when I make mistakes. So just know that no one's impervious. Everyone makes mistakes. So what am I dunking on Sega for? Now, this is one of those situations where I understand, but I still hate it. Gold Prim Sword 2s and Gold Prim Armor 2s can only grab 10 per week. I hate the fact that they keep locking this behind a weekly sort of thing, uh, primarily because of Arms of Finder 2s and I have no luck getting them. <laughs> primarily, th this just irritates the hell out of me. I have no Arms of Finder 2s. Uh, I think I have two at the moment. I need two more for my current weapon. And I just, I can never get them as drops and I always forget to make two more every week and that's on me, but I hate the fact this exists. Now, the Gold Prim Armor 2s and the Gold Prim Sword 2s were made for uh, exchanging when it comes to grinders. Now, I get why they made it this way. We have tons of grinders, we need something to use them on. Making so we only get 10 weapons and 10 armor, really irritating. Now, if I were to change this, I would say make it so we can get 30 armor and 10 weapons, maybe 20 weapons and 30 armor. What that allow us to do is it allow us to upgrade one of each of our units so all three units to 61 and our weapon is 61 or if you're using the bonuses you can get the weapon to 62 and the units to 62 overall instead of having to wait longer or wait till you have to farm getting a 61 is the actually important step here because that's what gives you your extra augment slot so realistically anything past that is just for battle power and a bit of defense and a bit of offense so it's not gonna make a huge difference your big power jump is from 60 to 61 and that's what's important and this helps you get there for your weapon but not exactly for your units you can do this for two units if you have the uh, the augmentation rate success is 100% saved up, which some people have quite a few of them, and now is a good chance to use them, because that means that instead of taking 10 per upgrade, it takes 5 per upgrade. Now, what I'm also learning is people don't actually understand how these, these armors and weapons work. So I'm going to show you guys really quick how these work, and I'm going to explain why I'm doing that. So Gold Prim Armor 2s, or sorry, Gold Prim Sword 2s, has this little EXP thing at the very top. And they give about a hundred, was it a hundred thousand nine hundred, a one hundred thousand nine hundred experience overall. And the reason for that is because of the weapon plus the augment. The augment is what gives you the hundred thousand experience when uses material. The weapon itself is only about nine hundred experience. So when I see people on Twitter showing off the fact that they have upgraded these weapons to plus forty and are confused as to why it's only giving them an extra like. 30,000 experience well that's because when you're using this as a piece to go ahead and feed into another piece what's being factored is this hundred thousand the base weapon plus the experience you use to get this weapon to plus 40 and realistically it only takes about 30k experience to get this weapon to plus 40. so it makes perfect sense the only other factor you have on top of that is if you're ever feeding one weapon to the other weapon, it's the same exact same weapon. Then there's a bonus that's given, pretty heavy bonus actually, um, and then of the same weapon types, right? So anyone using another sword does get a little bit of a bonus as well, if I remember correctly. I would not quote me on that one and just double check my work. I'm pretty sure that's the case, but I haven't looked at this in a very long time and I don't use sword, so it doesn't really matter too much for me. But anyway, looking at this process, anyone who is upgrading these weapons, 
for any reason other than they need to save storage space is completely doing this wrong. And if you're someone who's like, well, I don't want to hold on to these. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of them. Sell them. They are worth money because it takes so many of these to upgrade, but they're not difficult to get a hold of. They're at a reasonable price. They're at 68K a piece right now. Now, these were closer to 70, I think, when I was selling mine. But that means you can say, do your dailies, pop a boost and farm for an hour in one of these three locations and make about two to three mil pretty easily. Maybe grab some Valdine's, uh, you know, advanced. What are these called again? I think it's like, hold on, let me pull it up. I always forget the name of this stuff. So side task completed. The Relentless Trainings, grab the Relentless Trainings. For those of you guys who haven't actually done them, Relentless Trainings actually do give pretty good rewards on the later steps. Earlier steps don't give that really great rewards, but later steps do give really good rewards. Grab some of those, run some of those zones, level up your classes maybe, like I'm doing at the moment, and you'll get some good rewards that you can make some decent money off of. Since this has started, I've made close to 20 mil just off of, not, you know, off of scratches I've made about 50 mil, but off of just farming and selling things that I've made from this uh from these new zones i made close to about 10 to 15 mil overall and that's just selling off stuff and it's absolutely insane how much money you can actually make right now and if we were to make a change where this was so much easier to upgrade these weapons would be worthless in a very short period of time or they would be insanely difficult to get a hold of and then we would have to be waiting weeks to get these upgrades so please 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 for the love of god stop upgrading the gold and silver or the gold perm armors and the gold perm sword twos just use them, get your stuff upgraded, and then sell the runoff. That way other people can also upgrade theirs and you can make some money. Next, we're gonna talk about the second thing I saw, which surprised me, I think, more than anything else. And it's it's people talking about the new Starless enemies and the word reskint getting used a lot and the word cop out being used a lot. Um, I don't think people understand what a reskin is. So we're gonna talk about reskins really fast. A reskin is when you take one enemy or just something, right? An enemy, an ally, whatever it happens to be. You take something from a game and you change its appearance and nothing else. You leave the same framework, you leave the same attacks, you leave the same, you know, basically mostly everything is the same. Maybe a few values, like, you know, numbers wise of what they do gets tweaked, but realistically, the enemy is the same. Now, that is not what Starless are. I will give you guys a caveat. The Nogla Starless is probably the closest thing to that. The only thing that really changes is his punch attack just drains PP, which is pretty lame. So when it comes to offering feedback, Sega, that one, that one sucks. That one pretty much feels like a reskin, definitely should be addressed. The rest of them, <laughs> the Dido-like enemy, the Bujin-like enemy, a lot of the smaller enemies, all of those guys, completely different behavior and are awesome. Yes, they use the same framework, the same skeleton. Yes, they do look similar, with a different skin over them, but they do not behave the same. That is not what a reskin is. I'm not sure if you guys have ever played other games. Let's quote a few of them. World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy 14, Monster Hunter is probably the best, the absolute best game to even quote in this situation. And I'm gonna pull out an example for you guys. For Monster Hunter fans out there, you're very much familiar with the enemy Dr Rathalos. Well, that's like saying that every Rathalos is the same they're not <laughs> some of them are similar let's be honest what was it a uh, apex rathalos and i believe the most recent game in dread king rathalos are basically the same enemy um with some a few changes here and there but every other rathalos is very very different and if you told a seasoned monster hunter vet that rathalos i'm sorry that dread king rathalos was a reskin of rathalos they would laugh in your face um not even close <laughs> they completely behave differently yes they still have the same framework yes they do look a bit different than what the other one is but the enemy does not behave anything like the original and that quite literally is just a variant of an enemy and that happens in video games all the time you're going to see the same framework yes we would love to see new enemies be added into the game all together and we are seeing some of that with the new dual quest that's going to be coming up However, you're going to see different variants of Daedals. You're going to see different variants of Bujins. You're going to see different variants of, of, uh, of Wukongs. You're going to see different variants of all different types of enemies. I say Wukong and Goku is what I meant. 
but you're gonna see variants of all those types of enemies that is not a reskin now a reskin is noglith give feedback for noglith he's bs however the rest of them are not please 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 pay attention to what you're talking about now final thing that we're gonna all talk about is this whole debacle with the urgent quests now the urgent quests they have upgraded the falls urgent quest that pops here as well as the false ages urgent quest that pops here they're level 75. i'm gonna be real with you guys part of the reason why i was so excited for the personal dps meter is because some people are going to get a rude awakening when they use it a lot of people just aren't really paying attention to what they're doing in game to be able to deal damage and play properly and you're probably thinking oh well not everyone's got time to be a sweat i'm not even talking about sweating i'm not talking about weapon swapping and optimal class choice and optimal like everything i'm talking about some of the bare bones and basics like upgrading your gear to max having something in all of your augment slots maybe not the best thing but something that actually gives you a stat that you need in your augment slots having a semi-decently deep weapon at the moment having something upgraded like realistically right now if you're going into the most recent content and you're not at least using either a christia a, a neos um a neos a of some sort or a gun blaze you probably should look at what you're using because you can get something for close to like 3k that will be better than what you're using it's absolutely ridiculous what some people play with and it's the reason why some of these quests take so long because now the argument or the complaint is that their hp pool is too high it's taking too long to kill these enemies they just want us to get a new weapon um to have us chase after something else first off no duh that's how new weapons work. They want you to want to get the new weapon. They want to release something that makes you want to upgrade your gear. Yes, no crap, um, but they want us to get the new weapon to that way then, you know, make it so it's it's easier for us to deal with it back to what it was beforehand. Power creep is going to happen in games like this. They have to give you a reason to want to get stronger because a very common thing that you hear in a lot of PSO2 is, I don't need to get the new weapon. There's no reason for me to go after it. I'm already plenty strong enough and I can clear all of the content. However, you also hear the complaints of these, uh, these runs take too long. You know, uh, random groups are absolutely terrible. This is awful. Yeah, because a lot of people don't feel like they need to upgrade because they're still getting through content. Again, guys, it's not that difficult. Upgrade your gear. If you're having a rough time with these runs, they're gonna take a little bit longer. If you're running with randoms, that's expected. Run with a couple of friends, you're probably thinking, I don't have any friends. Run with some alliance mates. I don't have alliance mates. Be social make some alliance mates made some friends if you want these runs to go by faster yes i do runs in groups on my stream but when i'm off stream i do runs with randoms all the time and we like to joke that you know i always gear check people but i get curious sometimes and i take a look and man if you could see some of the things that i've seen i don't like the bully but holy crap some people do not belong in some of these runs and for those of you guys who played pso way way back so they played you know, pso2 base game back when things like um hatred profound darkness released and tried to pug those runs with random people and saw some of the gear that people went into that and think holy crap you know right now it's terrible you have seen nothing with some of the runs i have seen when it comes to gear because oh my god <laughs> where people have going into a lot of these runs nowhere near the gear they should even be close to touching some of this stuff it's just it's insane and it speaks to the overall community feel and how people are really I don't want to say respecting the content, but how people feel about what they need to do to upgrade their gear. It speaks to battle power. It speaks to the upgrade system currently, and it definitely isn't a situation of just difficulty. It speaks to the player base as well. That's all I really want to talk about today. Um, I'm trying to think of like little random notes. I've talked about a lot of things that as you know, players, we should be paying attention to, but Again, if someone from Sega is watching, I also want to mention things that realistically do need to be dunked on. Um, number one, the new Noglyph kind of sucks. <laughs> he is just a reskin, realistically, that needs to be dunked on. Number two, I don't know why, I don't understand why, we still can't make Gigas Force. Why? <laughs> what is the purpose of that? At this point in time, I understand you know, early on maybe making it so people, you know, Gigas 4s are worth a bit more while people were farming for them, but it's past that time. We should be able to craft Gigas 4s, realistically speaking. Make Gigas 3s and Gigas 2s useful, please. Um, and the last thing is these new weapons. I don't mind the difficulty, or, or I don't mind the drop rates on them. I know some people are like, oh my god, what are you talking about? The drop rates are terrible. 
Yes, yes, they are very, very rare. Realistically speaking, we were supposed to have another piece of content. And now thinking about it, it shows that the fact that we only have one weapon type shows that, yeah, that piece of content probably had a weapon that we we're supposed to go after with it along with, you know, this weapon as well. However, I would like for all these weapons to be available in all of the zones. It's obvious these weapons drop from certain boss types, which is why there's only certain weapons that are available in certain zones. But it should just be the entire pool of bosses that are, you know, the starless. That way they drop in all three of these zones. Because being forced into one zone to farm, while it does feel like some of the old school stuff, it's some of the old school stuff that felt kind of bad. And I don't want to be forced into a specific zone. Granted, you know, I get to go to Van for Laboratory Ruins for my weapon. Um, who wants to be the guy that has to go to Mount Magnus? Yeah. I know it's not me. <laughs> so my jet boot users out there, wands. Yeah, that's not a fun time to have to be. So that definitely does need to be changed. Other than that, guys, we got to get good. We have to really pay attention because, man, I have seen some crazy stuff. And again, I'm I'm not going to just ignore it anymore and just dunk on it on stream. I'm just going to dunk on you guys in real time on videos, too. It's dumb. Get good. We are better. We can be better. Please, please be better. I've seen you guys be better. This is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to keep up with more. I don't know. DM me if you guys have any great ideas. I'd love to hear about it. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care, everyone. Peace out.